Hey guys, what's going on? Welcome to a new video. Hope you guys are doing well today. Now with the War Within officially releasing today, there's going to be loads of new players jumping in to the expansion. So I thought I would do a quick little video talking through some of the big things that you guys can do if you are coming into the game and you are new and you haven't seen too much on the expansion to save yourself some time or things you need to get done or what some of the resources mean and so on and so forth. So let's get into it. Logging in, once the expansion begins, you will get a quest that takes you to Silithus. Um, You can have, have done this quest prior to the expansion release, of which case the quest will start in Dalaran. Um, but just so you can see, the War Within, nice easy little quest, and it gives you a teleport straight to Silithus. Now, this gets you started through all the stuff. It's going to take you into Dalaran to do some RP and eventually lead you to the Isle of Dawn. There you're going to start your campaign, and my recommendation is you take the campaign all the way through as your first priority. Dungeons are fun, delves are fun, you're going to want to get them like, all done at different points, but the game kind of revolves around you having done the campaign. At level 80, you are going to need to done the campaign to get into the delves, to get some of the world quests done, of which I'll talk more about in a second. So, you know, it's really quite important that you actually get everything done and then get you know, through the other content. It takes around four hours roughly to do everything, and it's going to take you to around 77 if you don't do any other content. Obviously, there's a couple of dungeons along the way. If you wanted to stop and do some side quests or a delve, you obviously can, but my recommendation is just get the campaign out of the way. Now, once you've completed the campaign and you're starting to get into the end game content, you'll start to see your map looks a little bit like this, with delves, world quests, uh, hourly events, bountiful delves on your map. Now, world quests, they're going to pop up. They're quite easy to do, obviously, same as always. They reward things like crafting materials, actual items. You can see actually really good items for what's currently available, gold, other items, and so on. What you will have is things like special assignments in the area. Now, this is actually one that's going to be going away in 21 hours. And if you can and are planning to go hard tonight and get it cleared, I would suggest getting this cleared and I'll explain why in a second. To unlock them, you need to do three world quests in the area. So you can see I've already done one. There's plenty of other world quests I can go and do to unlock it. So like a little bit of a harder world quest that you need to go and do. The first two that we've seen so far has been like a boss fight. And then this one where you go and basically reactivate some drills. It doesn't take too long and it's better done in a group in my opinion. Um, once you complete that, you're going to get this seasoned adventurer's cache. Now, that cache is going to give you a piece of gear. I would recommend just opening it straight away. That gear isn't going to change eye level depending on your item level. It's always going to be on the adventurer track and it's always going to be at the beginning of the adventurer track. To give you an example of some of the items you can get, things like this ring was a originally from that cache, as well as this weapon, which you can see is absolutely insane for this level of the game. So some of the gear you can get from there is going to be really good. So make sure you're in the right loot specialization and all that good stuff. The second thing you're going to get then is a restored copper key. Now these open up the delves, which you know each of the delves rotate once a day. As you can see at the moment in Isle of Dawn, it's the Earth Crawl Mines. Notice you can see that they're shinier than the other delves. That highlights that they are the bountiful one for the day. You have two choices of the way you want to deal with these keys. Now, what a lot of people are going to recommend is that you save them. You wait until Season 1 releases, of which case we can go up to Delve Level 8, and you can stack up all of these keys to go in there and get loads of good gear at the same time. Right? You just keep spamming it with all of your keys over and over again, and you're going to get a gear that's equivalent to Delve Level 8. That's an absolutely fine way to go. If you want to use them now and you don't want to hold on to them, go into the Delves and they will award you another piece of adventurer gear, as well as you know a little bit more gold and resources and things like that. So you have two choices with your restored coffee keys. Now, while we're on it, let's actually talk about your resources that you can get. You're going to get multiple different resources, and it can be a little bit overwhelming to begin with. So Valor Stones is going to be the Flight Stones of Dragonflight, if you played that. And if you didn't, it's going to be your base level upgrading resource for the entire expansion. You're always going to want more Valor Stones. Valor Stones relate to you getting higher item level by upgrades. 
What we then have is crests. Now, at the moment, you can get weathered crests and carved weathered, uh, sorry, car uh, weathered harbinger crests and carved harbinger crests. That's very difficult to say. Now, there is a season maximum how many you can get of these, so they aren't particularly farmable, but you can use them to upgrade gear past a certain item level. For Explorer, you can upgrade all the way on Flight Stone, on Valor Stone, sorry. For Adventurer, you can go four levels, and then the last four require crests. Um, and that's the highest we can get at the moment. So these are things you want to be using on pieces that you are particularly invested in. They've got the right stats for you, or it's a good weapon, or you know, good trinkets, things like that. Uh, re uh, Resonance Crystals, then, are also going to be available from a lot of different places. They are a warband currency, so you can transfer them between different people on your account. And you can use these to buy things from Renown Vendors. Now, if I go to the Renown Vendor in... Isle of Dawn, you can see that there is going to be like different things you can buy and all that good stuff. So speak to him. So if I had the resources right now, I could spend 2,600 resonance crystals and get a 584 veteran piece, which is the only places we can get veteran pieces from at the moment. Now, you can get these from treasures, from quests, from rares, everything. You will just get them from playing the game. Um, if you want to go and farm them, alts, I found going through quests on alts is a great way to get resonance crystals as well. Um, but yeah, that's about it. And obviously the coffer keys as well. So overall, there's quite a lot to know. One of the big things while leveling... Dungeons, if you just want to max level quickly or you want to you know, maybe do a, dun a, a level really quick to get your hero talents, jump in a dungeon. Dungeons are so fast, right? You're going to be doing 15, 20-minute levels. Everything's going to die because your scaling is outrageous and you will just be able to zoom through them. And especially with everyone coming into dungeons at the same time from le level 70, the scaling is kind of absurd. You will be able to level it very, very quickly. So... All in all, uh, one last thing, professions. You can get professions in the first town. They have fixed it now, so you should be able to get every profession from the first town. If you haven't got professions in mind that you want to use, my recommendation is to always pick up tailoring. You can only get weave weaver cloth, which is the expansion's cloth currency, or cloth, you know, goods, um, from if you have tailoring. So even if you pick it up, just to loot cloth while you're leveling or doing dungeons or anything else to sell, I would recommend doing that. There's going to be a massive influx of players coming in over the next day or so. Selling these resources is going to make an absolute fortune. The other thing is obviously then gathering professions are going to make you a lot of money um, and crafting professions. You know, you can get a lot of them quite quickly, a lot of knowledge and specialization to get something specific in there done. So, I hope this helps and it wasn't too much information. Let me know in the comments if there's anything you think I've missed or any questions you have. Join the Discord and you can come and let us know if you have any questions in there as well. Other than that, I hope you have a fantastic launch and peace.